Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I'll be talking about the use of visual force uh, in lighting experience. Um, I just wanted to request you guys to step away from a uh, develop uh, so from a platform developer to certification mindset and put on your consulting hats, you know, or an architect hat, right? Because what I'm going to tell you today, you know, it applies to platform developer too, but at the same time, it will be highly beneficial for you if you're, you know, uh, for your job of, you know, as an as a consultant or as an architect. Okay. Now, imagine, right, you have a team of developers who are extremely skilled on Visual Force page, right? Now, the customer wants all of the experience to be on the Lightning platform because they're given the fact the Salesforce extensively rely on the lightning framework and they are investing heavily in the lightning framework so they prefer their customers to migrate to lightning framework right, compared to uh encourage them to use or uh, use uh the salesforce classic that being said though visual force still works quite well on the lightning platform so that exactly what i'm going to talk uh today the things which works quite well and the things not so obvious which might fail, right? And the things which you can't do on Lightning, right? Okay, now, one thing I just wanted to mention there, right? It doesn't matter, you know, your team of LWC or Visual Force or, or, or hybrid developers, right? Where, which I mentioned in my previous episode that uh, you, if you're a React.js developer, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you can pretty much embed that on a, on a blank Visual Force page, right? At the end of the day, what matters is the return of investment, right? So the amount of resource a company use for to develop a technology, the main end goal is to get the maximum return of in, on investment, right? So if they can't do that, then no matter what technology you use is pointless, right? So that's exactly what, <laughs> what I wanted to mention when I cover this topic, right? Visual Force page, you, if you might be a developer, you know, who, you know, who's extremely comfortable in Visual Force space. That's that's besides the point. The point is, you know, what is good for your organization and what brings more money, right? At the end of the day, you know, unless you're in a nonprofit, that's a different story. But even then, you have to advise, uh, you know, a technology which is long lasting, right? It at least lasts for some time, right? So that being said, and, you know, Visual Force page visual force development is still great because you know you can build your pages um you know to use standard controller right so you can you can use the standard controller you can use um custom controller you can pretty much use you know javascript remoting which is a fantastic um you know option and you can use the remote objects as well right um and also you know you're pretty much comfortable with uh, in the markup, so Visual Force markups remains the same, right? There are a few tags which might act a bit strange when it goes to the Lightning platform, but beyond that, most of the things works just fine without any hassle, right? Now, I just wanted to mention the things which which is pretty obvious and works quite well. Say, for instance, if you wanted to create a flow which uses, say, you know, Visual Force page, that works quite well, no problem whatsoever. If you wanted to package Visual Force pages and component, you know, that works well as well, right? Package Visual Force page and component. Sorry, I'm just putting, you know, single uh, letters, but, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, so um, you can also overwrite standard actions with Visual Force page. That still works, no problem, uh, with an exception uh, there, there is a little bit of exception, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, you can also create a custom tabs and apps with Visual Force page. That still works, no problem. Uh, you can also create custom buttons and links that leads to Visual Force page. I mean, these are pretty obvious, right? I mean, I hope you guys know what I'm talking about because these things you would have covered when you um, when you have taken your platform developer one. So that's the reason why I'm not going into the details, right? That's one of the expectations I have uh, from you guys. If you've never done PD1, then this, this certification course is not for you. But that being said, today, I'm not focusing just on, on the certification side. We're just focusing overall, you know, from a company-wide perspective, right? When you have 
a problem in hand when you have a technology which is a legacy technology and and the requirement is to move to the latest one you know how do you manage it and the things which you should be should aware of right okay so um so the use you know the you know the user interface you know might vary here and there right but most of the things like i said will work without any problem um so that being said right there are a few things that you need to test it out right the first thing is that you know uh, if your page uh, use iframes, right, themselves, either with, you know, um, say if your page, so you, if they use iframes, and so either with this one, you know, Apex, um, you know, Colin, I hope you, you know what I'm talking about. You know, if your page uses this or static HTML, uh, being a, uh, so so that might cause some issue because being embedded into another iframe you know might have some issues that but you need to test it out okay um, and also if your page embeds a canvas app right canvas app you know what I'm talking about you can embed you know another app into Salesforce using a canvas technology right so if your page actually embeds that and especially if if, if you have used the canvas apis to integrate the app into Salesforce, then you might need to do a bit more testing to see if it all works, right? Because the, the reason why I'm saying is that Canvas app use iframes, and we just talked about iframes in a second, right? And so most of the times it, it, it works. Um, so now one more thing is that, and if you must be thinking, okay, I my page use JavaScript remoting and remote objects. Will that break for whatever? As I mentioned, right, uh, you know, the, in the beginning that these are the main uh, fun important functionality which uh, Visual Force offers, right? J JavaScript remoting, uh, remote objects. So the page which uses this one, right? Um, you know, the RO or, you know, JavaScript uh, remote remoting work. So it will work without requiring any updates to your authentication code. But that being said though, if your page uses other Salesforce API, then you might need to adapt your authentication code uh, to make the right cross-domain request, or otherwise, you know, you need to point to the right environment, right? So that's you know that's the the things which I mentioned that you know works, but might need testing. The thing which doesn't work, okay? Now, if you wanted to, so you know. The one of the most important thing, right, which I've noticed that if you wanted to render a Visual Force page as a PDF, right? So, you know, I'm sure that everyone knows that, right? If you're using a Visual Force page, you wanted to render that page as a PDF, that works perfectly well, right? Oh, come on. My handwriting is just sucks big time. I acknowledge that. Um, and my apologies for that. Um, so, um, if you wanted to render the Visual Force page, right, um, using, uh, so if you uh, if you wanted to render the page as a PDF, then it works quite well using um, uh, Visual Force page, especially in the, uh, you know like they used to do in uh, Classic. Um, but that being said, um, you can't do that using the Lightning Experience Design. If you wanted to render your page into PDF, that includes Lightning experience design, that's not possible in today's time. It's, I mean, Salesforce might come up with that. Okay, another thing. So if you, you know, if you've used the show header, you know, the, the you know, the show, right, and header, and, and the side attributes, okay. So Apex page, right. <clears throat> so if you have used, I'm pretty sure you, we will know if you are Apex developers. You know, Apex page has the attributes, right? Show header and the and the side attributes. I mean, it will have no effect on the Visual Force page if you are displaying it in the Lightning experience, right? You must be thinking, oh, let me use the header and the sidebar. Mm, sorry to say, it won't work when you are displaying in Lightning experience, okay? Um, because the standard you know the standard cl Salesforce Classic. If you use the Salesforce Classic, right? The standard Salesforce Classic header and sidebars are always suppressed. Okay, 
So there is, um, and so yeah, so that's a tough luck, right? And the number of related lists available in Salesforce Classic are not supported in Lighting Experience, okay? So you can't use that Apex related list component as a workaround. That's not going to work, right? So, um, so that's one of the um, the thing. And another thing, I just wanted to mention that uh, in Lightning Experience, right? Uh, if you if you are used to access the object list action, right? You might know about object list action. That's pretty much not accessible in the in the Lightning user interface. So there is no way to fire it. If you wanted to, you can't do that in Lightning Experience, okay? There are a few things which you can do it. I remember that, um, I remember an experience uh, back in the days when I used to do work at the Conga, and I wanted to build that Conga button, and for some reason, I couldn't get it to work, <clears throat> excuse me, on the Lightning Experience. It, it, I have to go to the Salesforce Classic, which is pretty annoying, but <clears throat> that's one of the reasons why I was just telling you guys, right? You know, you know, bear your uh consultant hat and just think from a consultant perspective right things which you can you know which will bring a great return on investment right now imagine if you are a company and decides to go to use visual force page and you are aware of the problems you know related to visual force page on the lightning experience and you know that this is going to cause you know few issues in the in the future and you're willing to compromise on that, then it's up to you and your team, right? I mean, but that being said, you should know, you should communicate, right, with the stakeholders, these, you know, X, Y, Z will cost them X, Y, Z amount of money, right? So, because that's that's the reason why this thing is important for you guys to understand, right? Platform developer too is not just about going and smashing the code. Right? That's old school, right? I mean, I used to do the same, you know, back in the days, you know, where, where, you know, developer means you just sit and write code, right? You sit in the corner, you know, no one knows that guy. It's like, oh, who's that guy? He's a developer, right? It just sits in the corner. I don't know. I hope you can relate. So, but that, that being said, right, platform developer too is a great opportunity for you guys to understand, you know, the things from an, an enterprise perspective, right? And from a consultant perspective, from an architect perspective, right? And to put everything into, uh, you know, into a small structure so that, you know, you can, you know, refer to it whenever you want it, right? So, yeah. So that's pretty much I wanted to, you know, talk about today. Um, you know, so so that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's session. Um, I will be doing a few more theory sessions because, unfortunately, I can't jump into coding straight without covering a few nitty-gritty basic stuff, right? It's important. Um, so, yeah. So I hope you guys have a great um, evening. Cheers.